do some research and uh, marinate on this a little bit. So that's it for this part, this quickie little disassembly here. Alright, this piece slid off now. Exposing a set screw. Surprise, surprise. Okay, this I do not know how to get out. So we're going to have to do some research. Man, this thing is well made. Just the quality of this thing is astonishing. And a mystery. Well, I'm not getting off this easy. I have to make a tool for this bushing. This bushing unscrews out of the, this section right here. I think it's this section. This is a pivot, right? So this thing pivots, the shaft runs through here, it sits in here and it pivots. So this bushing is screwed, I believe, into this guy right in here. So what I need to do is I need to take a measurement around this diameter um, and what we're going to do is, uh, because there's a flat here, so I'm going to, I'm basically going to trace the circle around here with the flat here. I'm going to bore this out on the mill, and then I'm going to make a little clamp that sits across the top here um, that will, you know, bolt down and, and basically make a wrench for this. And then, you know, we'll put a, a long handle and be able to break it that way. I've read on the forums some places that they're using four feet long um, pipe wrenches. So I don't have a four foot long pipe wrench. I don't know anybody who I could borrow one from. And uh, I don't know, it's just kind of fun to make a tool so I don't have to pay for anything because I'm not going to go out and buy a, a four foot pipe wrench to do this. So we're going to make a tool and we're going to get the job done. So what I need to do is take a nice accurate measurement because I don't want the tool to slip. What are we at here? What do my bad eyes tell me? <clears throat> Let's get, get our cheaters on. Alright, so 736, we'll make it 737, the hole. First things first, we're going to clean up this side right here with a uh, three-quarter inch end mill. Um, so we have a nice, you know, true reference surface. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to get another little piece of metal, drill and tap it, and be able to uh, cinch it down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this circle, you know, right? It's a circle and it has a flat. But I'm going to make the circle and the flat stick a tiny little bit proud. And I mean just, just a little bit. Just so I have a lot of good bite to, to squeeze down on this.
All right, that ends our milling. Now I measured right here from this round part to the flat here and the measurement with the micrometer is two inches five hundred and fifty six thousandths okay I want this top um, flat edge to sit proud right above the edge here this is going to be the edge of my piece of metal I want this thing to sit proud by two thousandths okay that will ensure that it is sticking up a little bit past and I could really bite down on it. All right. We need to come up 1 inch 277 thousandths and one, two, seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven. Try to pick a nice clean side here. Actually, this side's lumpy. It seems like you know somebody was was uh, beating on this or something with a hammer. So I want this side to sit flat uh, on the parallels. So we'll scribe this side right here. Two inches, seven hundred thirty-seven thousandths divided by two is one inch, three hundred and sixty-eight. So again, let's clean off our thing here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, one inch, um, three hundred and sixty eight. One, two, three, fifty, sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight. One, two, fifty. There's a quarter inch buffer. It's really not all that critical. Okay, we'll center punch that and uh, we'll get right to, we'll, we'll start drilling some holes and then we'll bore it out. I always enjoy a chance to get to use my optical center punch. This is a Skidmore optical center punch and uh, I just, I like the concept of these. These are pretty neat. So, there's a, there's a crosshair in there. There we go. So there's a crosshair in there. You line that, you know, you put this bushing on here, which is magnetic, and you line, and it's got a little slot in there. You see that slot that allows light to actually get in. So we line up our crosshair. I need some light. All right, you lift out the optical part, you put the, the center punch, into the bushing, and you give it a nice little love tap. You get yourself a nice center punch. Now the flat part is an inch and a half wide. So three quarters uh, on either side of our hole, right, is what we uh, actually I should do from this side. Three quarters. I want this thing off of the vise. Make sure it's out of the way. 
but as you know, but biting down as, on on as much of the part as possible. So we're going to drill, and then we're going to start to bore this out. Yeah, that will come in, and it should not interfere with the vise at all, because there is three quarters. So that should be. That should. Be, you know what? I'll go a little bit more. got this thing mounted very tightly so all right we're going to start by drilling some holes and then we're going to get the boring bar the boring head the criterion boring head set up and we'll we'll get her done just stepping through the drill sizes here trying to put in the, the biggest drill that will fit in this all brick chuck. I gotta go down a little bit. This is a big one. This is a half inch. <laughs> Alright, that's the size that will fit in my chuck. So now I need to switch over to the Criterion boring head. Let me swap that out. <clears throat> Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm just enlarging this hole, you know, quarter turn at a time with the boring head. <laughs> it's a long long process every cut you have to uh, adjust it so quarter turn so I'm going to do this and then uh, I'll pick up the camera once we once we start making some headway our tool is done I bored the hole in I left uh, I left enough meat so it would stick right flush with this drilled and tap drilled and tap you know quick and dirty just drilled the hole got it bolted down it fits this pretty good we're gonna give it a whack now and see if it's uh, if our efforts were in vain so here we go and that was it that's all it took okay this washer here is hitting. <laughs> Believe that. Well, it beats buying a wrench. And there is a certain satisfaction you get when you make a tool. <laughs> and it works. Alright, this is sluggish, so I'm going to make sure that I don't have any kind of set screws holding it in place or anything like that. Well, doesn't it always happen that way? You shut the camera off and you play around and uh, things get taken apart. So, this was just a fine thread and it came right out. Now you can see all this wonderful gunk that's in there. Here's the worm. She just slid right out beautifully. This thing, is, ha this thing has no wear on it. <laughs> The threads are immaculate. God, the craftsmanship on this thing is just through the roof. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is <laughs> make another tool. It's going to be a cupped spanner wrench. Um, I have to actually order the metal. I'm going to get some thick tubing, put it on there, put some hardened pins in there to free this last lock nut because I, I can't get it out. Um, once I do get it out, then I can take the table off de-rust everything. Um, but what I'm going to do with the other parts, you know, all back there, is I'm going to get them into purple power, get this guy here into purple power, and start, you know, start degreasing everything, getting everything nice. But this tool came out, came out, it came out fine for what it is. It's a total quick and dirty, crude tool. Look, I didn't even, I just used this as a handle, this little piece. It was a 
piece that was used for some milling or something, but it's a it's a custom bushing, custom wrench for this bushing. And this bushing really needs to be cleaned. So we're gonna set that over there. We're gonna set our wonderful brand new looking screw over there. And we're gonna get these things a cleaning. So I'm gonna take some measurements now. I'm gonna take some measurements deep in here. And uh, we're gonna order up our metal. And that, through the beauty of video editing, I'll be right back once the tool arrives in the mail. All right. So what I did here is I don't have any means of cutting a big two inch circle. And I really didn't feel like going through the, the, the steps of boring it and everything. So I, I hooked up a fly cutter and I, you know, I measured the distance. I, uh, I drilled a hole here and here. This is going to be the spanner holes. Uh, actually, first I drilled the center hole and then I, you know, I went off of that to get the two and a half inch span. Drilled and reamed it to a quarter of an inch. And now I'm just fly cutting it. I'm just down, 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 down. Uh, easy way. Watching the DRO until it gets to zero point. And that's it. So here we have the tables all off. This was my makeshift little wrench. I put two hardened quarter inch pins in there, set it down in the cavity and whoosh, took it off. So that's, <laughs> that's that. So here you see tons of flaking. Um, really impressed with how they, how they did this. This, uh, basically what I done was this, this is a, a ball bearing, some kind of roller bearing on here, um, and it, you know, it locks right into here. This it it fits right in. So I turn this upside down. Um, yeah, th this was flipped over on these uh, these guitar necks here. Uh, I had a friend who uh, worked at the Martin Guitar Factory, and he brought me all these pieces. These are mahogany mess ups. So they make great little supports for various things around the shop. So I had this right side up <clears throat> and with the brass hammer I just ge very gently just tapped on this and plump, it just fell right to the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna soak this in uh, in purple power to get all the you know the dried up grease and, and oil and stuff like this off it and then we're gonna de-rust it uh, same goes for this guy right here this is gonna go into a big bath of purple power it's gonna obviously the you know that paint is gonna come out shiny gray bright gray again um, there's all kinds of chips and crud in here, so this should come out looking real nice. And then we'll de-rust this, and then uh, it's assembly time again. Mm -hmm. 